I'm making a video on the eco diesel uh, engine, the six cylinder eco diesel engine using the Ram 1500. Anyway, my eco diesel blew up and I took it all apart and now I'm putting it back together. And what happened is this sprocket came loose. This nut, when I pulled the motor apart, this nut was that loose. And what happens is you have rockers down in there. This is what a rocker looks like. And they fit down in, they fit down in there. And the cam rocks them. So that's what happened. So what I did is I ordered a uh, long block, $3,200. I paid for it. A couple days later, Mopar says they no longer make the long block. And I said to them, well, how much is a new motor? And they go, like, $7,500. Could take two years to get it. Oh, bummer. So then I go, well, the only thing I can do is I've got to take this thing apart and fix what's wrong, which is mainly the rockers. The rockers, uh, well, they all broke. That's all the broken pieces to the, to the rockers. They just snapped. And, but the bright, on the bright side of things is I think they make those rockers really weak so that when they do snap, the valves do hit the pistons because the valves are horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical, in line with the pistons, they don't bend. So I still had to take the entire motor apart because all these little needle bearings, those little needle bearings ended up down in the, in the, crank, in the uh, crank case. So I had to pull it all apart and I cleaned it out and got all the needle bearings out of there. You just got to take a magnifying glass, I mean, uh, a magnet and fish them all out. Then I put the put the uh, oil pan together and I'm using this stuff called, uh, where is it? Molly JV8. It's an aluminum silicone sealer and that's what they say you got to use on the eco diesel. So I use that, put it together. So it is going back together. Now, the other bad thing about these motors is they have this thing called an EGR. And it takes and pumps exhaust gas back into your motor and makes your motor clog up terribly. This is one of the valves. That's an intake valve. And all that black stuff on there is about an eighth inch thick and as the valve's going up and down, up and down, it's pumping that into your valve guide and wearing it out. And that's a problem because these valves should look clean when you pull them apart. They shouldn't look like that. Also, all the intakes uh, had about a hundred thousandths or an eighth inch of, of, of soot. And I went and cleaned it. I, pull, I pulled the valves out and I cleaned out all the soot. And then... The exhaust valves, I lapped all the exhaust valves in. I just pulled it apart, cleaned it up real good, and then lapped them in because they showed a little bit of pitting, but it wasn't bad. Everything looked good. The camshaft looks good. Um, but on the right note is if this comes loose, it's not the end of the world for some people. You're just going to break all your rockers, and you can put it back together. Next thing is I even tried to buy these rockers from Mopar no longer available well, wow so I had to buy a head from eBay I got a head from eBay and the rockers all look good hey okay, today I got my head gaskets in for the eco diesel a couple things that I learned about this is the head gasket has a little hole down there there's a no hole where that's completely blank there's a one hole and there's a two hole. 
So they used my VIN number, they gave me the right head gaskets. And the reason for this is when the piston's at top dead center, you measure the distance from the top of the uh, block here to a point on the piston, and that determines your head gasket. Because I didn't change my piston or redo the bottom end other than removing the broken needle bearings out of there, the head gasket is correct. The other thing you want to do when you're installing it is they sell a tool that allows you to line up your head in, in other words, this direction. And it, it could be 15 thousandths or 10 thousandths mismatched uh, right, right here. So you could be over or in. And this just allows you, I think, I think I'm right, allows you to align the head. And then with the head gasket comes all brand new bolts. And I've got the bolts in over here and I'm getting ready to torque them down. And I downloaded a really nice manual. I guess it's from the maker of this. It's like hundreds of pages long. And they describe in ultimate detail how to put this motor apart, take it apart and put it back together. So I'm to the point now of torquing this head down. Then I'm gonna to torque this head down and I'm gonna begin putting my timing chains on. And I bought this kit, which allows you to, uh, yeah, allows you to line up your camshafts so you have proper timing. That was $100 on eBay. There's also, down here, is this, is a, this allows you to time it. Uh, it's a pipe plug, it comes out, but you use this and it allows you to time the motor so it goes to bet goes together exactly how it's supposed to anyway I'm on to the next step okay I got the heads on and I've installed the rockers down in there the rockers right here because they all broke in the other one I bought a head on eBay because Mopar doesn't have any rockers, roller rockers, whatever you want to call them. So it didn't go back together with perfectly matched parts. But I'm hoping since everything's in pretty good condition, it doesn't show any wear, that that won't matter. So that's that part of it. Next part of it is you need to set your timing more see it there and get a flashlight okay we got the heads on torqued down we put our rockers in these all these rockers broke roller rockers in there they all broke and Mopar did not have replacement rockers available so I had to buy a used head on eBay for a couple hundred bucks and I used those rockers would look, look good even though everything's not a, matched up to the old parts I'm hoping this will work but it's just what it is anyway the camshafts I want to show you how they time when you set your camshaft there's three dots and you put the one there's three dots there's one and then two you put the one between the two and that's how you time your camshaft um, on this side since I've already tightened down my caps I can bring this back a little bit and you can see how the dots are lining up I don't know if you can see that those are the dots and then all of these caps, what I did is I simply took a punch. I made a one, a one, two, 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 three, three, four, four. And then I did the same size. I painted these white. I painted the camshaft white. So I know these go here and these go here. And then you put all the caps on, you finger tighten them. And then the manual has a sequence 
of tightening. And they say 97 inch pounds of torque. And that's the uh, 2014 3.0 uh, diesel motor. So that's as far as we're at now. I'm going to start putting the timing chains on, putting the caps on. So it's coming along. Okay, that's the uh, fuel pump gear that <coughs> goes on to here. And I cleaned it real good with acetone. We don't have any galling really bad over here. So we're going to go ahead and put it on. But this is the gear that came loose. This is the nut, the bolt, I'm sorry, that came loose, causing it to spin and break the motor. And that was the cause of my problem. So I don't know if this is wrong or right, but I'm going to use some Loctite 271. We're a machine shop. We use a lot of it on our on our aircraft uh, parts. So it holds the aircraft parts together pretty good. So I'm hoping this helps. Keep the bolt from tightening up. So anyway, the bolt's going in. I hope this solves my problem. And I'm going to torque it down. And I have the specifications here. It says uh, high pressure drive gear, right timing chain sprocket, tighten the fuel injection pump gear bolt two, or gear two to bolt one, this 177 inch pounds plus a 60 degree turn. So I might make that maybe a 75 degree turn. Uh, hopefully this Loctite and that will solve this problem. Anyway, when that's all done, I believe once I tighten these up, this one, also in this one, this one I'm just going to tighten. I'm not going to put any Loctite on there. And I'll take these off after everything's tightened. And the motor should be timed, ready to start putting covers on and putting the motor completely back together. We're manipulating the motor back into the Dodge Ram. Went through and put all the parts back on. When you're putting on the uh, turbo, be careful underneath because there's a what, lot of weird little, uh, I don't know, fittings and stuff that you might tear out when you're trying to do it anyway I'm having to do this in the dirt we don't have any pavement out here but it's going in okay I got the motor back in my 2015 eco diesel to make it easier as you know I've jacked it up pretty high that far so the things you want to disconnect is your uh, air conditioning pump and your uh, oil filter assembly remove these two and it makes it easy to get to the uh, starter motor and the bell housing I mean the bolts that attach to the bell housing or the uh, torque converter it makes it a lot easier to put those in if those are out here, it's all in the way and it's a real hassle. The other thing is disconnect your alternator. And I disconnected uh, this, uh, which is the exhaust, uh, because it would be a lot easier to put the uh, EGR valve back on, which I hate to do, but nobody wants to uh, write me a, or flash my ECM. So I'm going to put it on for a little while. But anyway, it all looks good. Also, uh, I'm assembling it with the least amount of components on top. Because it's easy to walk in here. And get in here and you can just reach back in here and there's lots of room everywhere. So, I think it's going to be okay.